American plan to disproportionately benefit black people by getting them a $15 minimum wage and actually just say, hey, it's a $15 minimum wage. Hey, white people, this is good for you. And moreover, what it strikes me as being the case is that the very people who will say we can't have nice things because white people don't like policies that benefit black people ignore universal policies that can be framed broadly because they are, in fact, broad and benefit anyone and tend to disproportionately focus on those policies that do benefit That doesn't look like a $15 an hour apartment. I'm just saying. Marginalized groups specifically for the base on the basis of them having been historically discriminated against. Those policies should be pursued a hundred percent. But the very people who are like white people, white people won't don't like policies because they appeal to black people exclusively then go and pursue policies like anti-redlining policies or reparations, which I support. Mm -hmm. While ignoring policies like Medicare for all and, you know, free college tuition that, in fact, would do a better job of skipping over that hurdle of white resentment of white resentment. Which is not true. Umbrellas don't make it rain. Bree, Bree, read some shit. Umbrellas don't make it rain. Derek Hamilton. Education for black people does not close the racial wealth gap. It doesn't close the linear wealth gap. So what are you talking about? Free college and and. You know, and again, you know, it's nice to not die while you're poor, but you're still poor. Come on. I'm and poor is for a specific reason. For, for specific, poor for specific policy reasons. It's not just out of the blue. Not that that's not the, you know, like a lot of folks come here with nothing. And, you know, they love to say, I came here with only $2 and rubbed together two nickels. And now I'm a billionaire. You know, you hear these stories all the time. You have a group of people who were pushed to the bottom by policy. You know, policy that told us that we were not going to get a piece of the pie every generation. And now she's acting like, oh, none of that. Don't worry about none of that. All right, go ahead, y'all. Skipping over that hurdle of white resentment because it, in fact, isn't a means tested program that can be written off as for the poor, black and brown, lazy, blah, 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 the, all the, the welfare hand wringing that the Clintons and the Reagans and all the third way people engaged in for the last 30 years. So do you see what I'm saying? It feels like all of these narratives end up serving the interests of the corporatists who want us to keep fighting about race. The left has this version, it feels like, of making us fight about race under the auspices of, oh, we are anti-racist. And the right says, let's talk about race because we are racist. So this is my point, and and I just want to go here. If y'all really cared about taking it, to le- taking it to corporations and really building real coalitions, y'all would be out here talking about $25 an hour minimum wage, federal jobs guarantee, and a UBI at two grand a month. That right there would push most people in the direction that you need them to go. Would you still have a good chunk of Black people pushing for reparations? Yep, because you owe us our money. But would you have a lot more Black people listening to what you're saying and still pushing back saying, we'll take that, but we still want our money? Yeah, but y'all aren't offering nothing that's gonna help the bottom y'all are sitting here playing games like this is the 1950s like this is like this like a diploma automatically is gonna give you a good job these days like we already know how this is going we can even see with covid like white unemployment numbers are going down black unemployment numbers are stay are are staying stagnant at best like we're not even in the same kind of recovery we already know how this bullshit goes green green so like just because you have a Never mind. <sighs> <laughs> Y'all got the thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Please, Yeah. Um, the thing with all of this is that uh, if we side with you on all these things, we're also spending our political capital to get yep. these things done. Mm-hmm. And we've already seen how this played out with Barack Obama and the ACA. So yeah. you're telling us you want to do health care again, which which is basically telling us we're going to have another eight years where nothing is going to be done for us. So yep. why, would, why would we sign up for that? It makes absolutely no uh, sense. Agreed. Agreed. 
MG. Yeah, yeah I, I want to touch on something she said when she just touched on the anti-racist stuff. To my mind, this, this is just me thinking, right? If you consider yourself quote unquote anti-racist and there is a solution to pull folks up who have been most harmed and unaddressed by policy in this country, and you're not putting that as part of your quote unquote anti-racist, I'm talking about reparations, because people say, okay, Native Americans had it worse than us. Number one, is less of them. Number two, their stuff is being addressed. The stuff has been being addressed for a long time, right? It may not be to, to everybody's satisfaction, but there's something in process. We never even started that process, right? So um, we're the only ones left, just to be real with you. We're the only ones left. And if your role as an anti-racist is to push these policies through and that's your role, if that's how you see anti-racism in this country, you're an idiot, for real. I mean, there's really no way else to look at it. You're a fucking idiot. It is what it is. There's a policy right here for the people that have been dealing with this country, built the country, and going on, and all of our issues are being unaddressed. You're falling into that, uh, just another group that doesn't want to address us because you're scared, right? And now, um, but you still want to claim this anti-racism shit. It's a bunch of bullshit. That's all I got. John, what you got? Yeah, I mean, you already know what I'm about to say, like, she did it again. It's a neo-lib conspiracy. <laughs> it's a corporatist neo-lib conspiracy for black people to fight for political solutions and shit like that. This shit is crazy. Like, like not, not for lot, not when Latinos do it, not when people that's from the Middle East do it. For some reason, not when the Asians do it. Not when the Asians do it. It's not a corporatist. It's not a corporatist conspiracy to, to break us all apart because they're talking about Asians and not everybody. So what? What? what, what come on, man. Like, why? Wow, they've been doing the same shit for four years. Like, man, this shit, man, this shit is horrible, man. You're right. I think it is going to be a bloodbath. It's going to be a bloodbath, man. It's going to be a bloodbath because Biden so. ain't really doing shit. Like, yep. they, every, you know, people ate shit to, to vote for Biden. Even white people mm -hmm. ate shit to vote for Biden. Word. You know what I mean? Word. So people are, you thought people was pissed before? I'm telling y'all, man. I don't know. Later on, I'm going to tell you y'all about my homegirl's vision that she had. I'm going to tell y'all about that shit off air. Uh, and, and the crazy part, and the crazy part, though, the, the leftists that is, get, well, the quote-unquote lefties that is getting in the office, they not even doing shit. They not even do. They not even doing. They, 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 they not they leveraging really their power. Shit. AOC talking about y'all keep organizing so I can do my job. AOC is a pimp preacher. If I ain't never <laughs> like, <laughs> like y'all that's getting out here doing the Lord's work and, and putting this money in this pot, and I'm gonna keep being up here preaching to you. giving praises to God. Thank you so much for inviting us into your home. I'm Bishop Magic Wan, founder and pastor of the Magic World Christian Kingdom Church. Yeah, and, and it's, it's just, you, you know, here's, here's the math of it, right? The Democrats have a razor thin, I mean razor thin lead in the house. If they function as a block, they can put the brakes on it. They're talking about the Justice Democrats. If they function as a block, they can put the brakes on everything. You mean the just us Democrats? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> just them Democrats? Nah. Yes, and they <laughs> if they function as a block, they can change everything. But nope. MG, look, how, look, look, look what Joe Manchin doing. Joe Manchin. Yeah. Yo, yeah, Manchin and Christian Cinema. Yep. Yeah. Joe mm -hmm. Manchin be like, yo, I ain't voting for this shit. Fuck Joe Biden got to call this motherfucker. Joe mm -hmm. Manchin. Obviously, but that's, bro, but that's how you but, yeah. mm -hmm. but that's how you wield power right when you have it you wield it right especially for black folks we don't have it that often so when you have it you got to do something with it and like look at look at yeah look at Lori Lightfoot right now in Chicago right if she had to just say you know what fuck it I'm gonna fight for black folks to get what we need as much as possible right if she had said that she would have been in a totally different place than she is now. Totally different place. Now everybody hates her. Everybody, everybody. wants to. 
what did mm-hmm. they say when you try to please when you try to please everybody you, you please, please nobody no one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely so i mean yeah that's all i got anybody else mud what, what you is, got what it is um with the wielding power thing is they're afraid that they're going to get some backlash and then someone's going to take that power away that's all it is but it's going to get taken away regardless right i mean just because that's my thing right that's my thinking okay i've never been in those spaces to i never been in that kind of position but my thing is okay these folks are going to take my power regardless just because my face is black right so i need to do everything i can while i'm here in order to make something happen i i know also i know like in congress people get caught up in well even the little bit i little bit of good i could do for a long term here for the long term here is, is going to be undone if I'm not here, right? So they end up fighting for, fighting to stay as opposed to fighting to make an impact. 